I love Higurashi, and like many diehard fans that had been introduced to the series by way of the 016 anime, that adoration eventually compelled me to delve into the source material, the visual slash sound novel, an experience which I found to be infinitely more multifaceted, complex, and rewarding. Spending more time rattling around each character's headspace not only shines more light on their motivations and internal conflicts, but it adds a tangible narrative cadence, whereby the additional focus on the scenes of idyllic adolescent whimsy makes the inevitable deterioration into a sea of psychosis-fueled slayings all the more tragic and heartrending. And also, like many fans, when I was first getting into the sound novel, I assumed it would be traipsing through a story that I'd already seen via the anime. A different perspective, perhaps, but nothing new as far as content is concerned. To my delight, I quickly discovered that this was far from the case, that there was a whole world of fresh and exciting sound novel exclusive content to dig into, including, but not limited to, an entirely new storyline, plus an alternative ending to the core storyline. However, all of this extra content came courtesy of Higurashi's convoluted and seemingly endless release and re-release history across an array of consoles and PC, see my previous video on that subject, which can make it difficult to organize things in a tidy fashion, so this guide is an attempt to straighten out the logistics for fans looking to take the plunge. First, a couple of disclaimers. One, there will be slight plot spoilers, as this is mainly targeted at fans who are, at a minimum, familiar with the Dean adaptation. Two, the sound novel has been localized by Manga Gamer and can be obtained through Steam, so make sure you're supporting the official release. And three, the console exclusive content is not officially licensed at this time, but a fan translation is available via the unofficial 7th mod for the sound novel, which I will link to in the description. So let's start with the easy stuff, the eight arcs, or as I like to refer to them, chapters, which comprise the main story. These chapters provide the full Higurashi experience and are what were primarily adapted in the Dean anime, as well as the manga. They also comprise the only portion of the sound novel that is currently available in the manga gamer release, though there is a release tentatively planned for some of the additional chapters. To reiterate, if you only play these eight chapters and nothing more, you will still get a complete beginning-to-end story. So after the eight main story chapters, the next simplest to cover is Higurashi Rei, which is technically a canon installment penned by Ryukishi. Of note is that since Rei is tentatively planned for a manga gamer release, it is not included in the unofficial 7th mod, though fan translations can be found elsewhere online. Saikurashi acts as an epilogue to the main story, ostensibly an informal chapter 9, and it's as much worth experiencing as any one of the main story chapters. Dean completionists will have seen Saikurashi via the Rei OVA. These other two Rei chapters are light-hearted comedic one-shots, and I'll add Haji Sarashi, which originated from the light novel adaptation, as another shenanigan-filled Rei entry, since it was adapted as part of the Rei OVA, despite it technically falling under the category of console-exclusive releases. I'll briefly touch upon the Higurashi PC re-release exclusives, which, similar to Rei, are tentatively intended as part of a manga gamer release down the line. These are both ostensibly alternative universe scenarios, with Bus Stop being a short one-shot based on Ryukishi's initial concept draft for Higurashi, starring prototype versions of Mion and Rika, an outbreak centering on a reality where Hinamizawa has been quarantined from a deadly virus that has spread throughout the world. So now, the console-exclusive chapters. As in my Higurashi release history video, I like to separate these into three categories, the bonus chapters, the advanced story, and the alternative ending. Let's start with the bonus chapters. Tarai Mawashi is an alternative scenario which explores what happens when Keiichi decides to turn his back to all the dark mysteries plaguing Hinamizawa. This chapter is quite short and fulfills the role of the quintessential first bad end route that you find in most VNs and that you stumble into by making all the wrong choices right off the bat. Interestingly, this chapter sort of got an adaptation in the form of the fifth episode of the Dean anime second season, the final part of an anime exclusive arc called Yakusamashi. The arc concludes with Oishi's desperate, attempted interrogation of a bedridden Satoko, which mirrors the ending of this chapter where the same fate befalls a largely unresponsive Mion. Sakiyotoshi is an alternative scenario to Tatari Goroshi, the third chapter. The story here commences as usual with the arrival of Satoko's abusive uncle, but diverges when Keiichi, Shion, and Rena decide to take the situation into their own hands. It's pretty similar to Tarai Mawashi as a fairly cookie-cutter, bad end route, and mostly exists as a disconcertingly, almost comically morbid exercise in what would happen in the worst possible case of bad ends. Spoilers, not a whole lot of the crew make it out of this one alive, but if I told you there was a chapter where Shion and Rena teamed up and murder was on the agenda, how high would your expectations really be for a happy outcome? Yoi Goshi takes place in a world that parallels the first episode of Dean's second season called Reunion, but instead of revisiting Rena's fate decades in the future, it instead follows the story of the Sonozaki household, and a crew of motley travelers who find their way, one by one and for their own reasons, to the deserted, dilapidated ruins of Hinamizawa, quickly discovering that they may have more in common than it initially appears. 
This is personally my favorite chapter in all of Higurashi, as it's a surprisingly incisive and poignant psychological exploration of a group of pitiable drifting souls who quite fittingly come to find solace in a town frozen in time and abandoned by the world. It's a sojourn full of introspection, grief, and acceptance, and as such comes across as very Umi Neko-esque in its deliberate and plaintive unraveling of great character-driven tragedy. Finally, Kotohugushi is the odd man out, as it's not a strictly alternative scenario, instead unraveling the story of Hanyu's origin, her past life in Onigafuchi Village, the predecessor to Hinamizawa, and revealing the source of her connection to Oya Shirasama, as well as her unique bond with Rika. Naturally, it also explores a lot of the history of how Hinamizawa came to be, specifically being focused on the Furude family. Kotohogushi, like Haji Sarashi, is not available at the time of this recording in the unofficial 7th mod, though translation is currently in progress. Next up is The Advanced Story, which runs parallel to the main story and focuses on two new characters, Natsumi Kimiyoshi and Tomoe Minai. Natsumi is a relative of the Kimiyoshi family, one of the three great families of Hinamizawa, and has recently relocated to the neighboring city of Kakiuchi. Tomoe is a detective working for the Kakiuchi Police Department, who is introduced as being the first on the scene of a certain charred corpse found stuffed in a barrel in a nearby mountainside. Both characters are locked in an ongoing battle with their past. Natsumi struggles to escape the social stigma, the curse if you will, associated with Hinamizawa, which clings to her like a vengeful spirit, and Tomoe obsesses about uncovering the truth behind an incident which claimed the life of her father. The Natsumi sections follow a traditional Higurashi narrator structure of slice-of-life high school vignettes slowly descending into eventual tragedy, with the Tomoe sections being much more of a police procedural crime drama, a deep dive into the inner workings and machinations of the world of Japanese law enforcement. The first two chapters, Somi Atsushi and Kageboshi, are based off of the manga-exclusive Oni Sarashi arc, and primarily follow Natsumi as she adjusts to her new life in Kakiuchi. Her story eventually becomes intertwined with Tomoe's, as the latter is assigned to investigate a series of strange and often violent incidents in the city, all revolving around former residents of a local rural town called, you guessed it, Hinamizawa. The next entry in the advanced story is Tokyo Gushi, which is the first major intersection with the main story, taking place one year prior, in 1982, when Detective Tomoe Minai is tasked with investigating a girl named Nagisa Ozaki and her connection to a puzzling incident at a school in Ibaraki where all the windows were broken by a baseball bat wielding student, a certain Reina Ryugu. The more Tomoe looks into this bizarre and inexplicable incident, the more she finds that calamity mysteriously befalls anyone associated with both the incident and Reina herself. This brings us to the final entry, the alternative ending Miyotsukushi, which is a doozy of a chapter. It's the only chapter that replaces an existing chapter, Matsuri Bayashi, the original finale of Higurashi, and it acts as a finale for both the main story and the advanced story, bringing the two storylines completely in sync as Tomoe's investigation leads her to a mysterious organization known only as Tokyo and the far-reaching deadly conspiracy surrounding it. As a finale, I personally think Miyotsukushi is leaps and bounds above the original ending. The premise is that every lingering conflict that has accumulated across the previous chapters strikes all at once. From Shion's trigger-happy approach to finding Satoshi, to Tepe descending upon Hinamizawa to take custody of Satoko, to Rana's father being made out as a mark by Rina, to Mion's existential grappling with inheriting the title of successor to the Sonozaki name. So not only do our heroes have to divine a way to stop the true villain's master plan, but they have to do so while simultaneously averting a chain of disastrous pitfalls that have, on their own, had the power to outright doom prior timelines. It has laughs, it has tears, it has quite a lot of moments of fist-pumping jubilation, and the idea of overcoming such impossible odds to defy fate is much more thematically consistent with the ironclad humanistic resolve the Higurashi has always espoused. The only area where this ending falls short is that it completely lacks Takano's backstory, thus the overall Higurashi experience doesn't feel truly complete without Matsuri Bayashi. Because of this, while the two finales are meant to function as independent takes, to get the full picture, they are oddly both required. So with that all covered, let's talk order. The nice thing is, if you're playing via the unofficial 7th mod, each chapter has a pre-assigned suggested order presented to you at the title screen, but for the sake of posterity, I'll quickly go over them here. Since the bonus chapters are generally associated with an existing main story chapter, they can be played at any time once you've completed that specific chapter. The mapping is shown here. Now as for the advanced story and the alternative ending, from my perspective there are two ways to play through this content. Number one is the order that they are unlocked in the console releases. The thing about this order is that it heavily intermingles the two storylines, and while they do merge in the alternative ending, they are ultimately still largely disjoint narratives, so a more sensible approach may be to divorce them in terms of reading order as well, leading to option number two. Either order works, it's really just a matter of preference. 
I'll reiterate that you should read both Matsuri Bayashi and Miyotsukushi if you're interested in getting the full breadth of the Higurashi experience, but other than that, this should be all you need to have a go at the sound novel. I hope you found this guide useful, or at least interesting enough to check out the sound novel. My hope is that, one day, all of this console-exclusive content will see an official release, because it's truly a fantastic accompaniment to the main story and really fleshes out the world and the lore of Higurashi. Thanks for watching.